Yo, what's going on, guys? That's Big Gaming here. Back once again in GTA Nation, episode 24. And I turned my mic up a little bit because I noticed I was a bit quiet last time because I have been messing my settings. I've been changing my setup a little bit. So I actually lost about 10 minutes worth of video. So I don't know what went wrong, but I, I was watching it back to edit it. And the video, the, the video is literally just a still image of me looking at a chest for 10 minutes. So I don't know what happened there, but I'm going to hope it doesn't happen ever again. And we're going to move on. So what I finished was the Extreme Extermination Chamber. It's not 100% done yet. So you'll see here that I'm using reinforced glass here. So I made an oopsie at some point. And it wasn't really my fault. But I made a bunch of this borosilicate glass for this. And that's the HV tier glass. Well, what's funny about that is that glass is already HV tier number one. So I didn't even need to make that. But it's also annoying is that this thing doesn't even accept HV. It's like bugged out. So it only lets you do one energy hatch at a time. Because that's, I don't know, multi-block is just restrictive in that way. And it needs at least 2,000 EU to run. So the tier one of the, we're just going to call the EEC from here on out. The tier one is not real. That doesn't exist. So you got to skip the tier two, which takes EV glass. Don't do titanium glass. Just do reinforced glass. Because this was very cheap to make. I'd even say, like, too cheap to make. Because, yeah, we go here. Literally, all that is is alloy smelter, advanced alloy, or carbon. Whatever is cheaper for you. I used advanced alloy just because I had tons of all that stuff. So, yeah, no problems there. And then to run this, all you got to do is put in the powered spawner here. And you can put in a sword on the input bus. I got to make a sword for this. But you'll, you'll know it's working. You'll see the mob there. And then they'll die. And they drop the items here. So... We gotta run this through a little processing chain, so we're just gonna we're just gonna have to make a little something over here. I'll put it right next right next door to it. I'm also gonna start adding like little rooms and stuff around here just to break up the massive space that I have here. I just haven't really gotten to it yet. So yeah, we also get gunpowder as a byproduct. I'm not really sure what I want to use that for. I mean, it makes the etched abyssal stone. It just has a creeper face on it. You know, it actually has Ignis and Perdidio on it. It's kind of nice to have because those are the pr two primals that may be in high demand. We'll see. Just want to check something real quick. Okay, no, it's all like electricity stuff. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I have I might have some funny plans, funky plans for later. So yeah, the primary thing we're doing here though is we're gonna get water into this and then turn this into all and, and process this down. We'll get potassium and lithium as a byproduct. We'll use the circuit nine recipe just because we can get the full dust without having to package them. And then from there the salt water goes to electrolyzers. And I'll probably have to make a salt water processing thing on its own like a little just a little lcr or uh, not an lcr a processing array that can deal with it i actually have plans for at least two processor arrays with a stack of electrolyzers in it so far so the other new stuff is i moved the drives over to here and i've been starting to set the p2p networking so i had to mess with this for a little while so let me try to explain how i got this to work so the advanced memory card is kind of nice the blue is outputs and the greens are inputs so when you click on this, it usually kind of try, it tries to highlight for you which one you're looking at. So this middle ME controller and this whole setup here, all that this controller exists to do is to cart around P2P tunnels. So for example, my, if I want my items on here, so my items are going to be in the P2P over here. So and I'm labeling these. So this one is going to be P2P. I should give it a number. And I'm labeling these kind of like how I'm used to seeing things labeled in the field. So I'm just going to give them numbers going up by one. So this is P2P 1001. I shouldn't put a dash there to make it more proper. There we go. That's cool. They, they link them together. That's kind of cute. So this is P2P 1001. So we see that they're linked together here. So I gave them a label for being ME drives. Because, I mean, eventually I'm going to have a ton of drives. So might as well dedicate a whole P2P to that so that we have plenty of room to expand in this wall here. So yeah, so my drives are on here. 
So I put my terminals and my energy cube on here as well. And yeah, that's kind of how it's working. There's a new room over here. This is where fluid storage is going to be. So, other things I want to do. I'm starting off with hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and chlorine. I probably want just like one full of water, I guess. I don't really see a downside to storing some water. Definitely want to get sulfuric acid going in one. I'll need that very soon for my circuitry. And it's kind of all I can think about for now. I wonder if it's worth setting up like a whole tank for something like iron 3 chloride to let it buffer up, but I'm not sure about that. Maybe I'll just let that sit in its own little spot somewhere at the end of a processing chain. Because I'm not sure if I need a super tank full of that, you know? But maybe I do. And this is a similar setup. I just, I just forked the same line going over here. And we got a new P2P over here. So this one is fluid storage. And I, I kind of want to label the inputs and outputs on them. I said it right there. I don't really need to. So channels used eight. This thing gives a lot of great information. So there's other things you could do too. Like you could change the mode, bind to output, bind to input, copy input to output, and unbind. I've mostly been using bind to output and unbind. So with unbind, you can take these channels apart and unbind them from each other. And then bind to output, you can click on things that you want to make the output. So what I'll do is I'll go up, if I want to make another 1002, I will just label it like fluid storage PDP 1002 and just click bind. That's all you got to do and you can search them up like that. So I think this advanced memory card is kind of actually really nice. So now what's next up to do is figure out how to get all these things. So for the oxygen and the hydrogen, I think I'm going to just electrolyze water, but I'm going to use a processing array. So how do I make those? Probably out of my reach right now, right? Yeah, just a little bit. It's not that far away. The platinum's a bit annoying, but I could I could deal with it. And it's robust tungsten steel. So tungsten steel is also a little bit away. But I could use my current setups and get away with that for a little bit. And just cart over like the entire super tank worth of cells. So I'll do that for now. But pretty soon I want to get I want to get some PAs going with stuff in them. I don't want to do stuff the lazy way. I don't want to go cheap on things. I don't want to. I want to go big. So yeah, first order of business is going to be. I guess I want to make more ME glass fiber cables. Number one. And hold on, let me actually check how much power I'm using in this setup now. I guess you can kind of see it here. This is the only place I'm getting power, so 370 EU per tick. That's not bad yet. If you remember, I'm making like one and a half amps of I of uh, IV right now, which is six amps of EV. So I'm in a pretty good spot for power for now. Not for permanent, but for now. So let's start setting stuff up. Definitely want to get chlorine going, and I want to get building towards and circuit automation. And I also want to redo all my chemicals. I want to. Re I need to redo my plastics very badly. I think that this is the room I'm going to rework to make the entire pla like every plastic. So I'll get working on those goals simultaneously, and when I hopefully have some stuff ready, I can come back. All right, guys. So I'm working on the fluid storage right now. So I've extended it out, and I'm going to get working on all my chemistry stuff. I think first, because I feel like I need to do that to get my plastics going. So I sort of just temporarily moved over some oxygen and hydrogen and stuff over to here. Just the basic building blocks, blocks I'm going to be needing. So I'll just move them with my stainless cells whenever I need them. But I'm starting to move over all my oil distillation byproducts over to here. And I'm sort of troubleshooting my way through it. I kind of want to explain how I'm, what I'm figuring out. So I still got to test all this. But what I'm going through right now is a naming convention where... I'm sort of giving them each a number and a name, as well as the chemical formula there. So I already set up methane, so I'm going to keep these as the input. So I want the input to be here. And then all the rest of them can be outputs. Let's move, let's move the next one. 
these. I have to use a dense cable for the first couple of them just because I'm going to run out of channels if I don't. So this next one is ethylene. Let's go put this thing down. It's only 10 seconds. I've just been eating these things so that clears your status effect. I have a good amount of terror ward, so. So we're going to label this. And then I'm just going to say ethylene because I'm not going to know the chemical formula. I might put it anyways eventually, but who knows. Okay. So now that's ready. I can go down here. And we can hook this up like this. And, you know, I'm actually confusing myself. I'm going to need a way to separate the cables. I think you can color them differently. Maybe I'll color the last one. But that's not relevant right now. So this guy is going to be ethylene. And what do I want to do? Bind to output? Okay, so this is confusing. you got to read this. The mode bind to output, the selected P2P, and the bind target have their current connections removed. The selected P2P becomes the input, while the bind target becomes the output. Okay, so I want this to be the input, so I'll bind here. Okay, yeah, that is correct now. That is the output, and it's rain blood. Don't worry about it. So that is done. That one is correct. Let's get the next one. And then I gotta color one of these cables. So this is ethane. I actually have no idea what ethane is even used for. Literally nothing. Yeah, I'm not dedicating a storage slot to this. I should have checked what it was. I'll I will leave the super tank there for now. Yeah, that solves my problem then, if I don't want to actually store that in my P2P. That solves the problem, you have to use a dense cable, maybe I can even get away with not using it. Let's still lock the fluid in. I guess we'll avoid excess on this, because I don't need this. It does kind of look like you get more byproducts out of this. You kind of just get methane out of it. Maybe it'll be worth it to process that down. Propene? Propene has a lot of uses. So yeah, propane I'll probably want to dedicate just for the sake of it has a lot of different uses for many different chemicals. So we'll definitely move this to its own storage slot. That's the wrong one. This one. And yeah, I'm just going to go through this for every single one of them. I will finish this one off so that we can see the full process of me setting one up. Propane. And then we'll put the sign on it too. It might be a better way for me to label them some at some point, but we'll use the signs. I don't really I like them. And to turn this into a fluid P2P, you just gotta click on it with a cell. It's not hard. Okay, that's the output. And we're all good. So the other ones I don't want to take, let's take a look. I don't want naphtha or light fuel. Because these, if these are going to get dealt with, they're going to get dealt with right here. So I want all these. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, I don't even need dense cable. We can get rid of this totally. I'm happy with that. Actually, probably could minimize my cable usage even more. So we'll see this when it's done. All right, so me and my decisions. The reasoning for leaving behind these guys that I did is that all of these need further processing to reach the end point. So whereas something like ethylene, I want to store as ethylene. To, I guess ethylene even needs more processing. I'm never going to use just plain old ethylene, but we can fix that later.
but pretty much all these are an endpoint. So propene, I need that for my epichlorohydrin. And like, okay, that was propene there. And this is methane. Methane is always useful. But the rest of these are going to need more distillation. Probably to turn them into methane or other like hydrogen and whatever byproducts I can get out of them. And these can obviously be turned into more fuel. So I actually got a lot less out of this than I thought I would. But... I don't really need these byproducts right now, but pretty soon we'll be using a ton of hydrogen, so this will help us supplement our systems. So that's always nice to have. Other stuff I can do off this line is set up the steam and maybe even get, I mean, the heavy fuel as a pipeline is okay, but maybe I could, maybe I could hook it up into this somehow. I'll have to think about that. And it's like it's not that I hate having the pipeline. The pipeline is sufficient. It's just kind of unusual. It's strange. So next up is to get the chlorine going. So let me assemble the things I need for that. All right, so I'm almost done setting this up, and I did figure out the P2P and got it all working how I wanted to. So I'm transferring water here through the memory card or through the P2P network. And this is the output side. So to get this set up exactly how I wanted it, I had to make a couple changes over here. And me, I guess putting the signs on was a bit of a mistake a little bit early. So what you want to do is click on the output, input from output side allowed, and then make the output face the P2P input. And then fluid auto output into it. So that's unlinked right now, but if it was linked, you would see it working right. So now if I pipe fluids into one of the output P2Ps, it'll end up back here. And this will like act as a portal so I could also pull fluids out of this. So it's one input and everything else should be an output and it should work just fine. So I didn't really want to do this, but we have a reservoir back here. Just filling that. If I have a higher demand for water, which I probably will at some point, we need to actually make this a real system that takes P2P channels, but just because I'm a little bit low on, on mostly on cables. We're gonna pass on that for now. Uh, but yeah, I need a transformer. EV to HV. And then we'll, we'll get some gold cables for this. I need some 4x aluminums too. I mean, actually, I can, I can go ahead and play with the 1x's here. Only because the transformer will never request more than one EV amp, I can do this. That is EV. So it goes in the big one. Oh, why did I run out of power? Oh, I know why. Did this do something weird? Status shut down critical. Why did you do that? Well, we already got a lot of stuff. Okay, I don't know why that stopped. My guess was that it spawned an Infernal Mob, but I actually turned that off, so it can't spawn Infernal Mobs. Maybe it's just like very slowly drawing down on power. So that was running for like maybe half an hour before it shut off. I gotta keep an eye on that and figure out why I did that, because I don't understand right now. So yeah, we have energy there. Connect here. And now this should be able to run. Actually, stop that. So we're making salt water. And actually, that's funny how that came out here. I forgot that we needed an output bus until just now. So let me do this. The output hatch can go here. And then I need a bus. we got to do some bussing. Okay, that can go there. And then we'll switch this to circuit 9. I wanted to get the full dusts. 
And there, we should be good now. So start again. And then I'll go get my controls. One of these, one of these. If we are literally, let's just say like 14,000, which is basically completely full. Shut off. Safe mode. Okay, so we should shut off. Maybe it just didn't catch up with the controller. Okay, there, cool, shut off. So we need to lock this output as well. And we get potassium and lithium out of this, so cool. I will add two more drawers for those. So I've heard some horror stories with the drawers actually, but I'm gonna pray. <laughs> We're gonna see how it goes. Probably what'll what'll be realistic is that eventually these will all get replaced with just import. I think it's an import bus. Whatever sends it to my AD system, and then it'll go to some kind of deep storage there if it has to. Or at least some massive storage cells. So let me look at this energy hash. How are we doing? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it did randomly spawn an Infernal Mob. I don't really get it. So yeah, otherwise, I don't know why that was shut down. So I'm a little bit confused. But now we are making salt water. So from here, this can make brine, actually. I don't know what that is. A way to get sodium hydroxide. That's a lot of salt. We, we can't do that. So yeah, we're just going to electrolyze this. Now, eventually, I want to get a, like a multi-block electrolyzer, maybe even a PA with a couple electrolyzers in it for this. And a PA is just a processing array. I forget if I said that or not. But yeah, using a multi-block is not my favorite thing in the world. Or using a single block, my bad. But I mean, we can get away with it. So let's go grab an electrolyzer. I don't have one made, do I? I don't want LV. I want I want like at least an HV one. Actually, I have no HV circuits. Yeah, that sucks. Um, what? How are we gonna get around this? I had to have made an HV electrolyzer at some point, right? <laughs> Not to be picking from other parts of the base already, but like, this is all gonna get torn apart pretty soon. Maybe I never did. Oh, wait. Right here. I have, like, never even used that for anything, by the way. And also, I heard something run out of power, but I don't know what it was, I'm, but I'm not going to worry about it. So salt water will go... And I might as well put a little bit of pipe in case I want to do a... Some kind of, like, array of it where... I won't need a large one. But if I want to, like multitask and use multiple electrolyzers we can do it like this i'm trolling <laughs> i'm straight oh the misclicks are bad don't let me place a transformer right now please okay so you go in holy shit that scared me dude this is fake rain from thomcraft I thought I was just about to watch all this shit explode. Oh my god. Jesus. Okay. They know how to get you. They really do. They've evolved in their tactics. Because that really got me good. Okay, so the other problem with this is that this is going to need cells, which is kind of annoying. Just because this recipe, let me bookmark it. So in the single block electrolyzer, we need cells and circuit one. So yeah, I just got to make a little bit of a routing system. This is just going to be me fiddling around with conduits and stuff, I think. So give me a minute. I'm almost done with the system, actually. So what I need to do is handle the sodium hydroxide. So all I need is a barrel or a drawer for being 
We really want to be like that. And this will need a void upgrade eventually, but it won't have one right now because I'm out of those and I'm broke and I want to go to bed, so. And then this guy will get a filter on the insert. You, I need you. So you're going to whitelist hydrogen cells here. And then they'll go in there. And then these guys will stay in their place and go in there. And we should be all happy then. So the chlorine is going through this pipe. Are we getting backed up yet? It almost looks like we are. Hmm. It says there's chlorine stuck down here, but I don't believe it. That feels weird to me. It's like there's no reason it wouldn't just pump right through, right? It's like it is right there. Mm, I don't know. That's weird to me. I'll think about that and see if there's a problem. See, now... Oh, I forgot to put this on insert. I was going to say, now we're not even taking this out. Okay, cool. So that's pretty useful that we're making renewable sodium hydroxide now. Because this has a ton of uses. And by a ton, I mean like a ridiculous amount of uses. So going to need some storage buses. And while I'm at it with this, crafting these by hand really sucks. We need to get auto crafting going. I don't know how, how ambitious I want to get with this episode, but <laughs> that is where I'm at now. And yeah, this is totally bottlenecking at the electrolyzer. Do I want to expand this? Not really. We'll see how the chlorine is doing. But I'm really realistic. I'm just happy to have chlorine renewable completely, which that feels really good. And I actually have some chlorine upstairs. Let me move this over while I'm thinking about it. Don't worry about it. It's perfectly normal. All this stuff up here is getting torn out. All that is done or is very close to being depreciated. I'm in the wrong place. There we go. So that'll fill up probably really quickly. I'd expect like within by tomorrow it'll be completely full. So I will have a lot of stuff to use chlorine with. Yeah guys, that'll be it for today. We got infinite chlorine and set up a whole bunch of my fluid storage. I remembered how to use P2P and I'm much better at it now. And this this like advanced card makes it so much easier for me. I, do, I remember messing up a ton in the Vine journey, but I'm really enjoying where we're going with this right now. So yeah, we're building up the infrastructure. We're getting somewhere. I need to automate the production of ME cables and all kind of stuff next time. So going to be delving deeper into applied energistics. And with that, going to be starting to really kick in the EV. And hopefully start to make some bypasses to higher tiers for to steal some machines out of them. Because there's some really nice stuff that I want to get to. Things that are more efficient. Things that are going to be way better for the future. So, yeah, we're in a pretty good spot, guys. Till next time, thanks for watching. And have a good day.